God bless you. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Come on, people of God. And bless the Lord tonight. I pray that your will will be done. Your voice will be heard. Your plan accomplished. Your people have not come to hear a preacher. They've come tonight to hear your voice and do your will. Do you believe that God is looking for willing vessels? Do, do you believe that? Now, if you believe that, then I'm going to ask you in all reverence to lift your hand and say, I'm one of them. No, don't tell me that. Tell the Lord that. Do it again. Now, would you mind putting your hands down and listening? I may not get the chance to talk to you like this again. I, I truly believe the Lord has put a very strong word in my heart for you. And that's why I'm here. Now the Lord has spoken to me very powerfully about me recently. And what he said to me is sacred and private. But I believe that God gives us a time. He gives us a season to do what he tells us to do. If we do not do it, he'll just ask someone else. So, not just myself. I believe the Lord is asking every one of you and every one of these men of God to do something. And that something is very sacred to all of us. But what God is asking us to do we all know what it is. You know, no one has to tell us. But I also want to tell you that if you do not listen to the Lord and you keep, and you keep putting it off, the time will come, He'll just tell somebody else. And when you go and say, I'm ready, He's going to say, I'm done. I'm not going to do anything with you. So we must take heed that we must do what the Lord tells us and do it quickly. Now, one of the things that has happened lately that's frightening is we've heard and we have seen this scripture before our eyes. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1 says. For if the word if the word spoken by angels was steadfast in every transgression and disobedience received the just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? The danger of drifting away from God is a great danger. If you lost the anointing you once knew, it's because you've been drifting away with the tide. I'll never forget swimming uh, a few years back in the Bahamas. And I didn't realize that the undercurrent was pulling me. Literally pulling me away from where I had gotten in. To my shock, I was fighting for my life not realizing I was being pulled in, could have drowned. And I had to fight that current to get out. When it started, 
I did not even know it. When the current began to pull me in, Jesse, I did not even know it. All I knew is within minutes, I was struggling for my life. And I had to fight. And I fought with all that's within me against that current pulling me in. I wonder what current is pulling you that you're not aware of. Spiritually, I'm talking about. Have you drifted so far and you not realize that the anointing has lifted? Your prayer life has died? The Bible is no longer important in your life? What is God asking you to do now? It is time you must fight for your life. Listen to me. You must fight right now to get back on track. Get back to where you were in the spirit. Because the current is strong that's pulling you away. Now God wants to use you surely. And he's ready to anoint you greatly. But you must understand something. He hasn't moved. We have. It's not his will to forsake us. It's not his will to walk away from us. Oral Roberts told me many, many, many years ago. He took me to play golf with him. I'm not much of a golf player. And after Otto Roberts discovered what a lousy player I was, he quit playing with me. And then he sat me in the little cart and had a talk with me that changed my life. He said, well now, since you cannot play golf, let's talk. And I sat there and he began to talk to me about Moses. And he began to preach to me rather than playing golf, and thank God he did preach to me. He said, you know, Moses knew he would be God's servant. And Moses fought against what was being offered to him in the palace of Egypt. And he was talking like that. And then he began to talk about the Lord. How the Lord does not let go of his people easily. How the Lord fights to keep us close. It never left me. That God fights to keep his people close to his heart. But we are the ones who drift away. Now it is time we make a decision. That we are going to serve the Lord and we are going to give 100% of ourselves to Him. We are not going to allow ourselves to fall short of His will in our lives. We must, pay the, we must pay the full price and on that day stand blameless before the King of Heaven. I have made that decision. How about you? We will prevail. No force in hell will keep us back. God Almighty has given us a promise. And this promise belongs to every person who is serious about his walk and her walk with the Lord. And this promise is, ye shall receive power. This is not an empty promise. Ye shall receive power is a definite promise from God himself to you. Now, this promise belongs to everyone sitting in this room and to every believer around the world. This promise belongs to me, belongs to you, belongs to every man of God sitting on this platform and every woman, and every woman of God sitting on this platform. But the scripture says, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Now you must understand these words. 
Every believer has received the Holy Spirit within you. But not every believer has received the Holy Ghost upon you. In John chapter 16, the scripture clearly states, and in John 14 also, the scripture clearly states that the Holy Spirit is in us. When Jesus rose from the dead, he said to his disciples, Receive the Holy Ghost. Remember, he promised, He shall be with you and in you. The Spirit of the Lord is with you and in you. Every believer is filled with the Spirit. But not every believer is anointed for service. Every believer, no matter what denomination or church they belong to, are filled with the Spirit. You cannot be a Christian unless you are filled with the Spirit. Jesus said to us in His blessed word, and I want to remind you of what He said. And so please listen carefully to the word of the Lord. Because this tonight is going to change your life, I promise you. John 14, 16, I will pray the Father, He shall give you another comforter that He may abide with you, with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth Him not, neither knoweth Him. But ye know Him, for He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The Holy Spirit came to walk with you even before salvation for he is the one who convicted you of your sin he is the one who revealed the word of God he is the one who revealed your need for salvation your need for a savior before your salvation then when you accepted Christ Jesus the Messiah the Holy Spirit filled your heart and that's what Jesus meant when he said that the Holy Spirit will be with you and in you forever. Now say after me, He is with me forever. So the Holy Spirit then does not come and go. Now, Jesus promised in Acts 1.8, He said, you receive power after He is upon you. Now, He is in you, and with you forever, but He's not upon you forever. The Holy Spirit is upon you only for service and only for ministry. He comes upon me when I minister. When I'm done ministering, the Holy Spirit, His power is lifted. The anointing of the Lord does not rest on us 24 hours a day. The anointing, abiding anointing, the abiding anointing that's within us is there all the time. Yes, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that power for service. That power Jesus promised in Acts 1.8. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, people of God... The world today is hungry to see a people with power. Now more than that, I want you tonight to understand how that power is revealed and released on your life. The anointing of the Lord, which we call the power of the Lord, is found hidden in the presence of the Lord. Now, let me explain. Look at me, all of you, please. Every look, right here, right here. The presence of the Lord and the power of the Lord are not the same. God's presence is not God's power and God's power is not God's presence. We mix it up. We call the presence power and the power presence and don't know which is which. But you must understand that the presence of the Lord is that which is abiding 
and eternal. And the presence of the Lord never leaves you unless you reject Him willfully knowingly. The presence of the Lord is the same as His glory. The presence of the Lord is the same as His person. When we say the presence of the Lord, we mean the nature of God. We mean the heart of God. We mean the person of God. Remember that Moses who saw the power of God in Egypt, came to the Lord one day and said, Show me your glory now. In Exodus 33 he said, Show me your glory. I want to see your glory. He had already seen God's power. Now he was saying, I want to see your glory. God came and revealed His glory in Exodus 34. And when God revealed His glory, He revealed Himself. Beginning at verse 5, you can read this for yourself. God began to reveal Himself and said, The Lord, the Lord is gracious, merciful, long-suffering. God began to reveal His nature when He said, And that will, will by no means justify the wicked. God revealed His justice. God revealed His nature. So when we talk about the presence of the Lord, we're talking about the nature of the Lord. Remember what the scripture says in Psalm 103 verse 7. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Israel knew God's power. Moses knew God's heart. Now, when it comes to the presence of the Lord, it's his heart. It's his nature. It's himself. It's his person. It shall come to pass in the last day, saith the Lord, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. That's the promise of the Lord. God's power is promised to you. Today, you heard the teaching on the anointing from a conference just recently. Now you may have heard some of the material before, but the anointing was so powerful with this one that I wanted to air it because I believe that it's important that we understand, we as Christians understand the way the anointing operates. And, and I'm praying that the Lord will open your understanding to know not only how the anointing operates, but how to yield to the Lord so the Lord can use you. God is looking for willing vessels to use. I will never forget Catherine Kuhlman saying years ago, he's not looking for golden vessels, he's not looking for silver vessels, he's simply looking for yielded vessels. God is looking for men and women who will surrender, who will yield themselves and their lives to the Lord who will present their bodies as a living sacrifice and I pray that you will also give him your life today that God would use you because we're running out of time Jesus is coming yes with our with all of our hearts we cry come Lord Jesus and because time is running out God wants to use you and so precious Jesus I pray today anoint that one use that one minister to that one today and I pray that your mighty power will come upon their life and transform them your word declares and the Spirit of the Lord shall come upon thee and thou shalt be turned into another man. Use that one for your glory. And now, dearest Jesus, heal that sickness, remove that bondage, lift that one out of that pit of destruction, put them back on the mountaintop of glory, wash them with pure water, and use them, I pray, in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. God's people said, Amen and Amen. This has been a powerful program today, I know. 
and again tomorrow make sure to be watching and I pray that God will give you divine understanding to know the anointing of the Holy Spirit.